good, beer is good, beer is good, and stop. What's going on everybody? Welcome to this episode of the Beer Chasers. I'm Preston, and today we're getting back into some homebrewing. So a buddy of mine at work has challenged me to make a clone of one of his favorite beers, which is Fathead's Headhunter. So it's an IPA, as you guys know, uh, I don't typically drink IPAs. I've only brewed just a few. So uh, I was super excited to, uh, to take on this challenge and see how I do. So as always for these homebrew episodes, you're gonna see uh, the recipe that we came up with, you're gonna see the homebrew day, and then you're gonna see a taste and review. So uh, stick around, check it out. All right, so first things first, let's go over the grain bill for the uh, Fathead Headhunter. So Fathead is actually one of the cool breweries who actually list the ingredients for some of their beers on the website. So if you go to their website and you check out their uh, list of beers, they actually give you pretty much the malt bill as well as the hops. Now they don't tell you exactly you know, what amounts they use, but they give you enough to kind of, um, if you've brewed some beers before, especially if you're into IPAs, you can kind of take this recipe they've given you and formulate your own uh, recipe off of it. Um, additionally, Zimergy, or Zimergy uh, magazine had also cloned this beer at one point, so I found that recipe on the internet. Um, so I kind of hybridize and, and combine both uh, recipes. I like things, you know, that, that Zimmergy did, especially in the hop scheduling. I'm just not super familiar with hops and how to use them, what the best times and, and stuff are yet, because I don't brew a lot of IPAs. So I pretty much kept their hop schedule um, and some of the ideas on the malt bill, but, but some of the stuff they did just wasn't really matching what the, the website of the actual brewery gave. So um, it was a little, a little weird to me, so I didn't follow everything on the Zimmergy recipe uh, to a T. Uh, but I did pretty much just kind of combine my own. Uh, so first things first, um, I'm just going to give you the percentages again. Um, I was brewing eight and a half gallons. My efficiencies are going to be different than your efficiencies. Your system is going to work a little different than mine. So I figured I'd just give you the percentages and the IBUs, and you can plug this into your uh, your beer recipe tool and kind of go from there and figure out you know kind of uh, what amounts to put of which uh, which things. So to start, you know the the recipe, the beer itself is 7.5 percent ABV, has an IBU of 87. And an original gravity of 17 Plato, which is about 1.070 uh, gravity, if you're you know using gravity points. You know that's all from the website that the um, that the guys at Fathead provided for us. You know it's a really good starting point. You know at the end it should be 7.5 percent. You know it should start around 1.070, um, and from there I you know 87 IBU, so you can kind of craft the recipe to kind of hit these numbers. Uh, so what I did was uh, obviously we're going to start with some sort of base malt. So we're going to use uh, two row uh, RAR. I use 48.9% RAR 2 row. I use 26.7% uh, percent Marath Otter. So basically I use, you know, uh, I don't know, 65% or so of the, the grain is going to be your base malts. I split it between RAR and Marath Otter. This is one thing that I got from uh, the Zimmergy article that I kind of liked. You know, I've been doing this myself. I've been kind of blending my base malts to kind of give like a little more complexity. Um, you know, Marath Otter is going to be a little think more like a crackery or a biscuity kind of kind of flavor. Raw is gonna be your, your more traditional two row. Uh, from there, I use 8.9% Thomas Fawcett caramels. So this is about 13 uh, Love Bond or 15, uh, 13 SRM. So a uh, sweet little caramel there. Uh, I, I caution on this one because uh, different companies make different caramels and some are a lot higher in uh, SRM. So I stuck with the Thomas Fawcett because it was a little lower. Um, again, the the recipe on Fathead site mentioned caramel. And then plugging in the recipe, you know, the, the ones that were higher Love of Bonds that I could find online and order um, were a little higher and made the beer way darker than it needed to be. So I think this is the one that they used. Um, so that's what I went with, it's something in that 13 SRM level. Um, from there, I used 4.4% Carapils. So I used some of that just, you know, boost the body of the beer a little bit, give it a little more foam uh, and head retention. Um, so the recipe on the website calls for Crystal 15, which I couldn't find anywhere or, or couldn't find it reasonably. Uh, so what I did is I ended up splitting Crystal 10 and Crystal 20. So I would have used 4.4% of Crystal 15, but instead I used 2.2% of Crystal 10, 2.2% of Crystal 20. And that's it for your, your grains. Um, I did add 6.7% corn sugar or dextrose. So if you look in the, uh, the grain bill, generally it, it counts out as part of your, your grist bill. So 6.7% uh, corn sugar. So this is gonna raise the ABV a little bit as well as help dry the beer out a little bit. Um, and that's it for the grain bill, pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, for the hops, it looks like this beer features Columbus Tomahawk, Centennial, and Simcoe. So you're going to use these three hops uh, throughout the, the recipe and, and the boil. Um, so this is where I pretty much stuck straight with Zimmergy. I went with exactly what they said. Again, I figured they're much more expert at hops than I am at the point. Uh, and these are the hops that are mentioned on the website that they use. So it's the right hops. So I'm hoping this hop schedule gets us uh, close to what the real deal is. 
Uh, so to start, I targeted uh, 38.6 IBUs at the 60 minute boil with a Columbus Tomahawk. I then had a 45 minute addition. I used Centennial for 7.2 IBU and then Simcoe for 9.4 IBU. Uh, I did a 30 minute addition uh, with Centennial, 6 IBU, uh, and Simcoe with 7.8 IBU. Um, I then went ahead and did a 10 minute Whirlpool. Uh, I used Centennial, which gave me 5.3 IBU, uh, Simcoe for 6.9 IBU, and Columbus uh, Tomahawk for 7.4 IBU. Um, we're then going to dry hop this beer with two ounces of each of those hops. So two ounces of Columbus, two ounces of Centennial, two ounces of Simcoe. And that's pretty much it for your hops. Uh, from there, I, I fermented with WLP001 California Ale. Figured this is a West Coast IPA. I figured the old Chico strain would, would do us well. Um, you could probably use 05 in this case, US05, the 001, or uh, any of the other equivalents. Um, we mashed in at 149 degrees, so that's just right there at the, uh, the end of the beta, the beta rest. Um, I actually got an original gravity of 1.065. I know the, the original Play-Doh is 1.070, 17. Um, so I'm a little low on theirs, but you know, it's one of those things where you play around with your, your mash temperatures and your original gravity is trying to get those to line up sometimes. Uh, when trying to clone these recipes, it's just a little, little difficult to get everything you want. You know, I don't, I don't think this beer would have been super sweet. I don't think this would have fermented in the one mid fifties to kind of get my gravity up to 70, uh, 1070 with the recipe that I use. So, um, this is an area I was okay with kind of not hitting and nailing on the, the head. Uh, final gravity is going to be 1.008 for a grand total of 7.5% uh, ABV. And my IBUs were 88.6, so just one IBU over. Um, so that's it, I think. Without further ado, let's go ahead and check out the brew day. Thanks to the magic of filming and editing, we have the finished product here, the Headhunter clone. We have the original next to it, so we're going to compare these side by side. Let's go ahead and check it out. Uh, on the appearance, I mean, pretty damn close. I'm looking at it in the sun here. I mean, theirs is just a, a touch more orange. Uh, mine's like a little, a slightly darker red, but I mean, just by like an SRM or something. I mean, maybe just one uh, color there. So, on the aspect of cloning on the appearance, I think, yeah, I mean, it's pretty damn spot on, you know, maybe, maybe just a little adjustments we'll talk about at the end, but close enough. Let's go for the smell. See, so originally here, you get some nice kind of citrusy, mango-ish kind of um, sweetness out of it. The, the hop smells really good. Um, a little bit of earthiness, a little bit of pine, you know, everything you'd expect in the big California IPA. It smells great. I'll go for the clone. Hmm. Similar. Uh, but not nearly as strong. I mean, this one's kind of is twice as pungent. So, um, as far as cloning there, I mean, it, it smells very similar. You get some of that citrus, get some pine, get some of that kind of grassiness. But um, I think theirs is a little stronger. You know, almost twice as strong, I should say. Um, so, as far as cloning, I'd say we're about seventy-five percent of the way there. I think we're on the path. Just needed more of it. Uh, well, best part of the taste. Cheers. Let's try the original. It's 
nice. You definitely get a big hit of bitterness. I mean, this is 80, 80 plus IBUs, so you definitely taste some bitterness. Uh, but you do get some of that citrus. You get some of that pine, a little bit of grass. I mean, everything you expect in the West Coast IPA, you're, you're getting there for sure. And it's nicely balanced. I mean, it tastes well. Uh, the malt balance is pretty nice, you know. If you, if you watch the show enough, you know I don't necessarily like IPAs. But when I do drink one, I want it to be kind of balanced with some malt. Um, that's definitely there. A little more bitter than I'd normally like, but um, still, I, I think it's a good beer. Uh, let's go for the clone. Cheers. Close again. like the smell. Um, the original just has much more of a, a hot punch. Bitterness is close. I mean, the bitterness itself and how bitter the beer is. Um, but as far as, like, the hop, uh, a flavor hop, um, just not quite as pungent as theirs. You know, theirs is pretty much, like, twice as strong. Um, the malt in ours is also a little sweeter than theirs. Um, not by much, but it's definitely different tasting in the malt just by a hair. Um, and, and the hop just isn't quite as punching you in the face as theirs is. Um, mouthfeel pretty close. I did use a water profile on this one. I targeted the your typical hoppy IPA water profile, the chloride to sulfite ratio, uh, you know, the right direction to let the hops shine. Um, I think it, they taste similar, you know, medium, or sorry, light to uh, light to medium-ish, light medium. Um, you know, we mashed at 149, so it wasn't going to be a super sweet, thick beer. And the profile, you know, I use again was, was more towards hops. Um, so I think we're good there. From the clone aspect of the taste, sorry, I think we're about 75% of the way there again. Mouthfeel, I think, is close enough. I think, you know, it's, it's a little subjective anyways. Um, so let's just talk overall. Like, did we nail the clone? I'd say we're in the style of. I, I wouldn't call this a 100% clone. Um, again, because the color is a little different, the hop smell is different, and the hop flavor is different, but it's definitely in the style of. So if you had somebody like my friend at work um, who, who likes this beer, I think they would be uh, okay with this beer. I think they, they'd enjoy it. Um, I think they would say, you know, it's not quite Headhunter, but hey, it's really close and it's really good. You know, I like this style of IPA. It's my favorite style. And this beer would probably be close enough to, like, scratch their itch if they couldn't find this beer anymore. Like us in Florida, this beer is not going to be around anymore. They don't, they don't distribute down here. So some of the last ones are on shelves are the last ones we're going to get. So, you know, someone who enjoyed this beer so much was inclined to try to brew it. I think this recipe is definitely in the right direction. So how do we get this from in the style of to 100% clone? Um, I think first in the color, maybe using a touch less of that caramel malt, so the, the caramel, which is like 13 uh, SRM, maybe using a little less of that to get the, the SRM down a little bit. Um, I also used the mixture of caramel 10 and 20 instead of caramel 15, uh, crystal 15. So maybe I'll try to find like the crystal 15 to get it down a little bit. Uh, maybe that because the 20 is in there. Even though blended with the 10, I would imagine the color wise would still be like in the 15 range, but. It'd be something I'd be willing to play with in the, the beer tool to kind of see what it did to the SRM. Um, let's see, on the hops, you know, um, one thing, I, I just don't know how fresh our hops are. I imagine this brewery's on a contract. They're getting fresh hops, you know, shipped in all the time. So their hops are probably going to be much more fresh, much more pungent than ours are going to be. Um, so maybe trying to find really fresh hops. Um, we could also try to dry hop more. We use two ounces of each. So maybe, you know, up on that to three ounces of each or three and a half or even four ounces. I mean, I don't think there's any limits on how much you can dry hop with. Um, who knows how much they're using, you know. Um, so maybe add more hops in there to dry hop to really make that that um, that, that hop punch just really punch you in the nose. Uh, for flavor, same thing again. I don't know how fresh our hops were. Um, also, we had that 45-minute edition. I got that from the Zimmergy article, and I'm not sure how popular that is. You know, I've never really used a 45-minute edition before. Um, usually I do 60, 30, 15, flame out, you know, whirlpool. Uh, whenever I do hopping. So maybe taking that 45 minute edition out and putting those hops into the Whirlpool or maybe like a 15 minute edition or even into the 30, just something that's going to give it more flavor hops. Because I think bitterness wise, how many bittering units are in here, it's close. It's, it's pretty damn close. You know, um, I, I think we're in that 80 plus range. It's just we're not getting that hop uh, flavor that you want. You know, you're generally going to get that out of your Whirlpooling, some of your, you know, your 15, 20, 30 minute edition. So Let's take those hops out of the 45, move them into the 30, the 15, and some whirlpool, and uh, you know see see what that does for us. So those are the improvements I would make. But other than that, I mean, happy with the beer. It's definitely in the style of pretty close. Um, you know, I know my buddy James has tried some. And he says he likes them. Um, you know, I just wanted to sit down and do the side by side myself and really see what it was. You know, it, it's hard to tell anybody that a beer sucks. I get it. You know, I've, I've definitely brewed some stinkers, and they all haven't been winners. But um, it seems like he's been happy with it. So. 
that makes me happy because at the end of the day, it's the last thing you want to do is when someone helps you uh, buy all these ingredients. You know, it's not cheap to brew a batch of beer, especially these IPAs. You're throwing so many hops in there, and the hops can be expensive, you know, so almost as much as a malt bill sometimes. Um, it, it's nice that he, he appreciated it. He enjoyed it. Um, and, and, again, I think it's in the style of a couple tweaks and adjustments to get it closer to the original. But brewing it as is would get you pretty close and I think would make anybody who likes this beer or this style uh, happy with it. So I definitely recommend giving it a shot. Other than that, it's going to wrap it up, I think. So let me know what you might have done differently. You can comment, like, subscribe, share, retweet, Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, you know, YouTube comments, whatever you want to do. Just let us know what you think about it, what you might have done differently. If you've got a clone for this beer that you think is 100% on, I'd love to hear it. I always love chatting with people about this stuff. So that's going to wrap it up. So. I guess that's it. Preston, the Beer Chasers, we'll see you later. Beer is good, beer is good, beer is good. And stop, beer is good, beer is good, beer is good. Let's go drink some beer.